What's up, YouTube? This is Galacticon. I'm coming at you now with another episode of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Top 5. Today, I'm going to be bringing you the third episode in my series of my favorite Yu-Gi-Oh! cards from all the different eras of Yu-Gi-Oh! This, of course, is going to be the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds, which a lot of you guys, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, will know that this is my favorite of all the different anime series. I just really thought it was the most well-told, best-developed characters in any of the Yu-Gi-Oh! TV series. So, without any further ado, these are my top 5 favorite cards from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds era. So coming in at the number 5 spot is a card that literally needs no introduction, one that every Yu-Gi-Oh! duelist should know about. Of course, I'm talking about Stardust Dragon. Being Yusei's number one go-to boss monster definitely made Stardust an iconic card. But not only that, one of the things that set Stardust apart from previous main character boss monsters was that it actually had an effect. Not only that, but it had an effect that was relevant and useful to the meta. Making Stardust not only iconic for the anime series, but for the actual card game as well. Coming in at the number 4 spot is the god of all Nordic monsters, of course, I'm talking about Noden, father of the Azir. And although it was released late in the 5Ds era, many players were very excited about this iconic monster from the anime finally getting released in the TCG. And even though Odin's summoning conditions are pretty hard to actually meet, it did not stop a large number of duelists from trying to achieve it. The good thing though is that once Noden finally got out to the field, most of the time you were able to ride his power to victory. So although it might be the least competitive of the cards here on my list, it is definitely iconic enough to make the number 4 spot. Coming in at the number 3 spot is the only card on this list still currently placed on the Forbidden list. Of course, I'm talking about Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Trishula was able to make a huge splash upon its arrival, as players instantly gravitated towards Trishula loops, allowing you to banish every card out of your opponent's hand before they even got a turn to try and combat you. The Trishula loop was so devastating that the monster was quickly limited to one copy per deck, and eventually the following format was placed on the ban list. And although it was only playable for a short time here in the TCG, the power that Trishula had and the mysticism that it currently still holds over the player base can be felt by many duelists still today. Coming in at the number 2 spot is one of the most epic cards from all the 5Ds eras. Of course, I'm talking about Red Nova Dragon. The fact that you need not only a Red Dragon Archfiend, but two Tuner Monsters to summon this big guy out gave casual players many crazy ideas of combos to try and come up with to actually be able to summon this creature. With its ability to continually gain attack points, and of course have a mighty resistance to just about anything your opponent could throw at it, Red Nova Dragon was quite the force to be reckoned with. There were so little cards that could actually deal with this creature when it was first released, that if you were actually able to summon him in a duel, typically your opponent would have no answers to get around him. So coming in at the number one spot is a card that should come as no surprise to any of my longtime viewers. Of course, it's going to be Shooting Quasar Dragon. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you should know that Quasar is probably one of my favorite cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! The fact that you need two Synchro Monsters plus a Synchro Tuno Monster to make him should make him almost impossible to be summoned. But with the help of cards like Formula Synchron and TG Hyper Librarian, Shooting Quasar quickly became a win condition for just about any deck that he could be played in. Overall though, Shooting Quasar Dragon is definitely an iconic card, and as many players say, watching another duelist try and summon Shooting Quasar Dragon can be almost as fun as actually doing it yourself. If that doesn't make a card epic, I don't know what does. Alright YouTube, and there you have it. Those were my top 5 favorite cards from the Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds era. Of course, they may differ from the ones that you would pick, so I encourage you to let me know what your top 5 would be down in the comment section below. And also, remember to stay tuned to my channel as I'm going to be continuing on with this series, moving on to my top 5 favorite cards from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal era. And I guess that's it for now. This is Galactic God, out.